it's really dreary today at Poe and it's been wet and cold. And so outside, we're not really doing too much in the garden, but inside we are starting seeds for the spring season. And seeds aren't just good for planting, they're also really great for eating. So join me after in the kitchen, we're gonna make a seeded cracker and put together a snack board for you to enjoy with your family. Before you plant your seed, you need to read your seed packet. Your seed packet has very important information such as the seed depth, the seed spacing, and it can tell you when to plant your seeds. So today we are planting basil, sunflower, and red cherry tomatoes. And we are going to start with using some organic soil that has 10-10-10 mix of nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. It also has peat moss, perlite, poultry litter, and pine bark to add those good organic nutrients. Pre-wet the soil so that the seed can be nice and moist. You want to make sure that all of the cells have soil filled up to the top. We are going to start with the basil seeds. And this is our container, but this is our cell. So we're going to use our cell to plant our seeds. I like to use my knuckle as a guide for measurement. So on the back of our seed packet, it shows us how deep we're supposed to plant the seeds. For basil, it says to plant a fourth of an inch. This is a, usually a half of an inch. So half of that will be a fourth. And so I'm going to use my pinky as a guide and make holes that are a fourth of an inch deep. So typically we put two to three seeds per cell. So two seeds and I'm going to drop them in. Remember to look at your seed packet for planting depth. Some seeds have different planting depths, so it's really important that you plant your seed according to the seed packet. Also, remember to cover your seeds once planted and make sure to label your seeds and seedlings to make sure you don't mix them up with each other. Here at the Post Center, we use a grow light station, but at home, you can put your seedlings in a well-lit or sunny area. Once you found a sunny spot for your seedlings, make sure you water them daily. Your baby seedlings need plenty of water and extra love so that they can grow up strong. Once your seedlings have sprouted, you may want to thin out your seedlings. Make sure to look at the biggest one, the biggest seedling that you see in the cell. Once you have identified the biggest one, you can gently remove the other seedlings. And so now we have thin that cell. Once your seedlings get a little bit bigger, now it's time to harden them off outside. When it gets warmer, you need to place your seedlings outside so that they can get used to the temperature. Now that we've planted our seeds, let's go into the kitchen with Taylor to see how we can prepare our seeds to eat. Seeds are a really great source of fiber, micronutrients, protein, healthy fats, and flavor. And a little bit goes a long way. So they're really easy to incorporate into all sorts of different meals, be it tossing it on a salad or on top of a dip, eating them by themselves, or in a trail mix. Today we're going to add seeds into a cracker and make a seeded cracker that we'll then put onto a snack board. So we need a mixing bowl and we're gonna add in our dry ingredients first. So here we have a half cup of whole wheat flour and one cup of all-purpose flour into the bowl. We have one teaspoon of salt. We have one teaspoon of sugar and then we have our seeds. So today, we planted some sunflower seeds, so we're also gonna add those into our cracker. And I have about three tablespoons, and so that's gonna go straight in. 
And this is totally optional, but for some extra flavor, I like to add everything but the bagel seasoning. You could add any sort of nuts or seeds you liked here or any other spices. This just gives it a little bit of extra flavor. So I'm gonna add about one tablespoon of those seeds straight into the bowl. And then you're just going to want to combine all of the dry ingredients. We'll need a rubber spatula later in the recipe, so I think this is a really good tool, but you can mix it with anything you have, and you want it to be fully combined. Now you want to add your wet ingredients, so we're going to do a half cup water and two tablespoons of olive oil. And that's it. So once you have everything in there, you're going to just combine it. It might take a minute or so to stir this all together. You want it to be totally combined. Make sure you check the bottom of the bowl for any excess flour. Sometimes it likes to get kind of stuck at the bottom. This is also a really great recipe if you have kids. It's super simple to help with. And if you wanted to make this recipe gluten-free, you could do that. You might find that you need to add a little bit extra gluten-free flour. Once your dough is completely combined, it will look like this. And if you were to pinch some off, it's sort of the consistency of a Play-Doh. So what we wanna do now is take the spatula and cut the dough ball in half. You could do this with your hands, but cutting it with the spatula makes it a little easier to see what a true half is. You also need two pieces of parchment paper that are cut to the size of whatever baking sheet you're using. So I'm gonna lay one of those sheets down and take half of that dough ball and you can kind of pre-mold this a little bit with your hands into a bit of the shape of a rectangle and put that right in the center and then you'll take your other sheet of parchment and just lay that on the top. I like to kind of push it in a little bit to get it started. And then all you're going to need to do is roll out the dough to the edge of your sheet. You want the thickness of this to be about an eighth of an inch. It's really convenient when you use sunflower seeds because they are a really good marker for how thin you should get it. So you can just remove this top layer and it comes right off and then you have your sheet. But what you want to do now is cut score lines in it. So the easiest way to do this is with a pizza cutter, but you could also use the rubber spatula that you had. You want to just make these even lines across so that when you take them out of the oven later, they break apart very easily. So now you're just gonna put that on your baking sheet like this and they're ready to pop into the oven. All right, so our crackers are out of the oven. They're looking really good, they're smelling really good. So you'll know that these are done after about 20 minutes or when the edges start to brown a little bit. You can also feel the center crackers. Those are usually the ones that are gonna be a bit thicker. And if those feel completely dry, you know they're ready to go. So we'll let these cool for about five minutes. And once they're done, you just break them apart and they're good to go. So snacks are a really great way for us to get in food groups that we might be missing in our regular meals and to get energy throughout the day in between those meals. Also a great way to use up different types of produce that you have at home. So when you're thinking about making snacks, we wanna try and at least get two food groups every time we have a snack, just to make them a little bit more balanced. So today we're going to be putting together a snack board or kind of a grazing board. So we made it a rainbow, so we have all sorts of different colors. All the different colors do different things for our bodies, so it's great to incorporate color in snacks as well. So we have some cherry tomatoes, carrots, bell pepper, cucumber, a little bit of radish for our fruits and veggies. We also wanna make sure we're getting protein in snacks when we can. So here we have some hummus. We also have two different types of cheese. Those are a dairy, but also have a little bit of protein in there. Um, we have a really great hummus recipe if you'd like to check that out. We also have some blueberries and some dried fruit, dried cranberries in this case. These are a really um, great thing to have on hand because they're super affordable and they're really shelf stable. And then last but not least, we have grains. So we have our cracker that we just put together on the board as well. And crackers are really nice because they're super versatile and they go with kind of anything that we have on the board. Wow, Taylor, this looks good. Thanks, and thank you all for joining us today. Comment below what you would add to your snack board. And make sure to like and subscribe. For the full recipe and additional garden to kitchen resources, make sure to check out the description below. And don't forget to stay, stay po-fit. Po -fit. <laughs>